Okay, the materials I'm going to be using for this pad are Zorb. The topper fabric, which goes against the skin, this is a quilter's cotton. And then the waterproof fabric here is called PUL, which is polyurethane laminate. If you're using my patterns, you want to cut the shape of the core exactly to that shape. And then for the sewing line, the shape of the pad, you're going to trace around that and use that line as a guide to sew on directly with the needle and then just roughly cut around that edge. And then just cut roughly again the layer of the PUL. Grab your core and position it in the center of that sewing line. You can use pins, clips, or basting spray. Basting spray is pretty quick, but I don't have that on hand, so I'm just using a bunch of pins. And then I'm grabbing my sewing machine, getting it all threaded up. I like to use gray thread for pretty much everything. And then for some reason it didn't record, but I'm just using a straight stitch around the whole core. Put the right sides together in order to stitch all the layers together. Pin in the seam allowance so that you're not poking holes in the pad, which might reduce the amount of, you know, waterproofness of the PUL. And then just take your time and go slow, stitching directly on this sewing line. Um, you'll get faster with time. You don't have to try to hurry on your first, second, fifth pad. You'll learn tricks that work well for you. With my sewing machine, I don't use a walking foot. With my previous sewing machine, I did like the walking foot. So sometimes it just takes a little experimenting to see what you like. Leave a space for the turning hole, backstitch to lock in your thread, and then go ahead and trim off that excess seam allowance. If you were to leave that on, you wouldn't be able to turn the pad right side out. There would be a bunch of puckering and it just wouldn't lay flat. So that's why we're going to trim this off. Try not to trim too close to um, what you've just stitched because then sometimes the edge will fray and you don't want that. Um, with sharp curves, sharp inner curves, you want to snip there to release some of the tension so it won't pucker when you have turned it out. And then as I turn this out, I'm just going to be rolling the edges of the pad with my fingertips all around so that it will lay flat using a knitting needle to poke out some of those hard to turn areas and making sure all the edges are flat. And because once you sew this down, it's stuck that way forever. Pay attention to the turning hole, get that nice and flat before you start top stitching. When you begin top stitching your pad, go ahead and back stitch a few times to lock in your thread and then just go slowly stitching along the edge of the pad. I like to stitch my wings. Some people skip those and just stitch right by them. You can decide what you like to do. Um, and I just use the edge of the foot and line that up with the edge of the pad as my guide. I uh, lift the presser foot, turn the pad, do a couple more stitches. I try not to be pulling and like tugging on it. That's why I prefer to lift the foot and turn the pad more frequently. Because sometimes your layers can get a little wonky if you try to go fast and turn the pad with pressure instead of lifting the presser foot. When I'm top stitching, I like to use a stitch length of about 3 as opposed to a 2.5 when I'm stitching the layers together. Next, it's time to apply some plastic cam snaps. Here, I always use bronze because bronze pretty much matches everything. You fold the wings around and decide where you want them to be and then poke through to make your holes and press the snaps on. I have to change the like the little die part right there before I use the different snaps. And yeah, there it is. So exciting. 